everybody? Can you hear me? Thumbs up if you can. Yeah. I see nodding and thumbs up, so that sounds good. And we're going to let everybody see each other. So if you want to unmute and say Merry Christmas and good morning, that would be lovely. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to Sue. Christmas. That was beautiful. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are we all the kiddos? Is that <laughs> yeah, you're all the kiddos. <laughs> Did Santa make it to everybody's homes? <laughs> yep. We don't know yet. I was, we haven't been home yet. Oh, well, I was tracking Santa on the NORAD tracker, and, and <laughs> it said that Santa came to Jackson, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know, there you go. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Some of us are going to have to sneak out and check our trees and find out. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, everybody. This is our annual storytelling tradition, and it involves bells. So if you uh, don't have your bells yet, we've got our bells here. Um, please do grab your bells. And let's see, I'm just going to add one more co-host so that we can have help letting people in. Welcome from everywhere all around the world. We have people from, I think, Italy and North America and multiple states. So Ohio's well represented this morning and New Hampshire. I think I've got all the states. Oh, Hannah's here. Oh my gosh, we're here from all over the place. Wow, very cool. Huh. Yes, hi. Hi, Merry Hannah. everyone. So you're dialed in from what country, Hannah? I'm in Italy. And so Cassandra's in Italy too, right, David? Yes, I... We I are, to... we're, we're in, Derek and I are here. Wow, so we have two people from Italy in this, wow. in this Zoom. Wow. You guys are international. <laughs> wow, cray cray. And at least two phone calls in from uh, Ohio. So, you know, hey, the good, good, good representation. So we're going to start this morning with carols. So if you have a request for a carol, I'll, I'll definitely give you a good cue. Um, I'm going to tell you the list of carols that we, can, that we can offer to you. And then you can tell us which one you want. <laughs> Um, let's say we can do, it came upon a midnight clear, silent night, holy night, angels we have heard on high, O come all ye faithful, O little town of Bethlehem, away in the manger, hark the herald angels sing, go tell it on the mountain, joy to the world, and the first Noel. So is there a request for a first carol of the morning? Kevin, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and say what you want, honey. Silent night, holy night, please. Okay, so we're going to play silent night, holy night. And we'll do two verses. Is that cool, Chris? We're, we're all in elf hat. Well, two of, two of the three people in the sanctuary are in elf hats, and there's an elf up in the balcony helping us with the caroling. So he's still the guy. Go for it. Try again. So Sleep. 
Uh, we're going to queue up um, the Drummer Boy choral performance that we shared. It would debut last night, actually, at our um, 9 o'clock Zoom service. So we're really excited to share that with you all. So we'll do that next. And then we will, I think, start our morning with prayers. Come, good title because we actually had it in our, um, our, not even our archive, our current offerings. So that was cool. Nice little God wink for all of us. So let's begin the morning with prayer. And we start always with our prayer concerns. So if there are any that any or all of you would like to lift up, I would simply ask you to go ahead and unmute and say out loud those prayers. Sandy, go for it. Yeah, I um, I don't know, I'm going to cry. Mm -hmm. I would like to send prayers to my sister Jennifer and her family. They did lose uh, Emily, one of their uh, great Pyrenees dogs, um, two days ago. Uh, she died peacefully, I'm told, but um, still still hard to, to take during this time. So mm -hmm. prayers for them. So for um, gratitude for the life and the love of animals who give us an unconditional presence and remind us of the simplicity and the purity of what it means to be in connection with another creature, um, for the gift of their time, whether it is short or long, and with request for the comfort for those that mourn the special companionship of each unique personality of a pet who has become part of the family. And today, especially for Emily and those who loved Emily, we honor her life. And through Emily, we honor all the creatures that become part of our lives. And all of us, certainly our family 
really we were a one dog family. The Benson have, Bensons have very kindly um, become the family for the second dog we tried to make our family dog. Um, so thank you to Hannah's family. But um, we were a one dog family and she had, it was a very storied part of our lives. Other um, prayers? Kevin, go ahead, you can unmute. Okay. Prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris and Pastor Nathan and Jennifer and my mom and dad, Patricia and Joseph Hamry and Travis Morgan who passed away when he was 21. And um, my friend Paula who has serious back pain and Bobby, who has a diagnosis of scoliosis, and for Jeanette and Sue from our church to have good health. Thank you, Kevin. Other prayers of concern that you wish to raise up this morning? Yeah, I'd like to ask prayers for the family of my brother's in-laws, um, his father-in-law, Ted, who's 89, slipped and fell on ice and hit his head and is he has a brain bleed and he is in a coma oh. and they don't expect a very positive outcome. Mm. When he had gone out to get the mail and of course the mail went flying when he fell and his wife went out to pick up the mail and she fell and broke her arm. Oh, no. So um, a lot of drama and um, but peace right now in that family. And for healing, if it's possible, but also just the presence of love to surround them, especially if this is a journey that brings him to the end of his life. Um, so we begin with a prayer simply for light and love to be visible and tangible for this family, to surround them and guide the caregivers who are part of the love and the journey that may see someone through this life and across the threshold into the keeping of God and the coming home to a larger and greater love. But for those who are here in this world, we know that there is mourning and there is difficulty in the saying goodbye or even the keeping vigil and the uncertainty of what might come next. To knit together bones, and to just surround the family with peace and comfort and the resources and the relationships they need. And as we, as we pray for this family to acknowledge that for all of us, there is an uncertainty of footing in these landscapes and sometimes metaphorically in other ways that our lives are putting us in precarious or unknown terrains for the mindfulness to step carefully through our lives, but also to take the courage to take the steps that we need to take and not to be paralyzed. And since, since we're praying for bodies, we are going to do this prayer. We've been doing this prayer every week because we have so many people with so many serious diagnoses right now. We have um, several new diagnoses of cancer, some of which are quite life-threatening in our, in our own community. So we are going to say a prayer right now for the, our tongues and our teeth and our gums and our mouths and our throats, for our noses and our eyes and our ears, for our heads, for our brains, for the network of nerves and synapses that connects us, for our spines, for our bones, for our hearts, our lungs, our spleens and kidneys and stomachs and livers, our GI tracts, our joints, from head to toe, the body that holds us up and is our home in this mortal plane, for its fragility and resilience, for the challenges, the places that people are having pain or disease or some kind of a challenge for minds and mental health, for changes in cognition, stroke, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, ALS, the different kinds of illnesses that combat the way that we live and how we yet 
become full people regardless of the bodies that hold us because change is what happens as a human. We ask for God's presence in these bodies to make well what can be made well and whole what can be made whole. To hold tenderly our changing, fragile, resilient, amazing bodies. To help us give thanks for how unique each of us is and to know that each of us in our body, just as we are, even in our changing hurt conditions, we are a reflection of God's self made in the image and the likeness of a creator who loves us wholly just as we are. Are there other prayers of concern this morning? Then let's move to celebration. Um, there's a brand new baby in Jackson. So baby Stella was born to Margaret yesterday, I believe. So we welcome a new baby in Jackson. New life is always a, is a gift and a reassurance in these times. Uh, for the gift of families that can Zoom together and connect across continents and be in one place and celebrate each other's presence. I see you, Kev. Give me one sec. Um, Sandy, go ahead. This is a weird one, but um, <laughs> it actually means a lot to me is, um, and your mom will can attest to that. I don't know if she got snow yesterday, but I am so very, very happy and thankful that I have a white Christmas in Ohio. Because <laughs> <laughs> all I hear is they don't get it anymore. And so I'm very, very, very thankful for it because I feel like I'm I'm at home, so it makes me feel connected to New England. So thank you, God. Kevin, you wanted to give a gratitude or a celebration? Yeah, what I'm most joyful on for Christmas is that um, the Lord is near the brokenhearted and the Lord saves those who are crushed in spirit and love covers a multitude of sins and and I'm also joyful that Reverend Gail and Chris are my adopted parents, even though they may not think so. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. <laughs> oh, are there any other celebrations? Gail and Chris are not old enough to be your parents. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom telling you, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Oh, uh, hi. This is Sarah. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> um, I'm grateful for being able to Zoom families and for help because I work been working on a COVID unit since March, and I don't have COVID still, which I think is amazing. And neither does <laughs> my family or my husband. So that's what I'm grateful for. Thank you, sweetie. And, and my parents. <laughs> and Sarah's got her first COVID vaccination on her report card too. So there you go. Um, I, <laughs> I want to say a prayer uh, just for mm, protection and vigilance for our children, for our children who are serving abroad in, you know, in the armed forces, for our children who are teaching and learning in different parts of the world for our children who are working on the front lines. Um, we have three daughters zoomed in here this morning, two sisters, three generations of one family, two generations of another family, and uh, just those connections for, for all the people that we love who then connect us to people that we never know, but this world is as big as one relationship away. So for the connections and for God to be present for all who are vulnerable and all who are strong, may God be present to all of us. Let's pray together. This is a day of gratitude for the gift of love, for the reminder of the gift of love, because God's love, creative love, never left us. And yet this story reminds us that love is born into us, into each of us. 
and embodied by our connections individually and communally to each other. And this gathering this morning is a great example of how love shows up. And so we give thanks for love and the gift of love. And today we give thanks for the gift of light. And we ask for protection for the places and the people who are vulnerable. And we give thanks for the reminders of the glory and possibility of this life. And we ask that God will be with those who mourn and remind us that joy is possible. Amen. Well, so Sandy, I have to report that it is basically flooding in Jackson. The river is rising up over its banks and the fields are already starting to flood down, downtown. So, Oh, um, no. Yeah, yeah it's, it's looking pretty tumultuous out there. Chris did send me a video this morning of the of the the creek, the river there. So yeah. I'm like, mm. yeah. Yeah. So um at this time I would invite Sue Titus Reed to play for us a solo. So let's just center ourselves with her music.
mute and offer some love to Sue for that. Woohoo! That was awesome. Thank you, Sue. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> She's playing her bell for us. Now, it, does everybody have your bell handy if you've got one? Any kind of bell will do. Jingle your bell. You can uh, you can unmute yourselves for the just so I can hear your bells. <laughs> All right. Now, while I'm going to tell this story, go ahead and um, unmute. But at least show me your bells when we get to the part. So every time I say the word bell during this story, you ring your bells. Okay. And what we are doing is we're going to take one of my daughter Jessie's favorite Christmas stories and we're going to adapt it a little bit this year because a live version of this story actually happened in the United States this year. And I think as you listen to me tell the story, you will begin to see how we're going to weave some of the details of the real story into the fairy tale. And you will also begin to understand why this is a Christmas story. This is a story of Little Spruce. <laughs> and Little Spruce was one of many young saplings growing up in upstate New York, in Oneonta. And Little Spruce was in the care of a veteran named Al. Al had come home from the wars he was retired and he had a family. He found that his heart was made full by being good to his community, by giving back whenever people needed something. He was one of the people who was there with the meal they needed or the help they needed or the, the helping hand or the tool to lend. And he found comfort from raising trees. And so Little Spruce was one of his trees. And maybe because Al was the kind of person that in his nurturing passed along his own goodness into his trees. Little Spruce seemed to soak in and embody that desire to be present to others. Now, he was in a grove of spruce trees and the spruce trees competed because the ones that were tallest and straightest would potentially be chosen to become the Christmas tree in the court of the Queen of Rockefeller Center. And every year, representatives from her court would come out and they would look at the different spruce forests all around upstate New York and other regions where those great firs grew. And all of Al's spruce would make themselves as straight as they possibly could because when they heard the chimes and the bells of the representatives coming out into the woods, they wanted to look their best because they hoped that they would go to the court of the queen of Rockefeller Center and become the great tree that it would inspire the biggest, greatest city in all of the continent. And little Spruce dreamed of being a grown spruce tree and having the glory of being at the center of her court on Christmas Day. And so he grew tall. And when the bells chimed and the queen's woodsmen came out to check Al's tree, they started to pay attention to little spruce because indeed spruce, little spruce had those mighty branches out thrust and was tall and straight and promised to be a towering spruce and a most dignified spruce. But in the winters between the visits of the queen's woodsmen, life happened. And one winter when the snows were deep and the winds were high and all the forage was missing in the world, a small deer came stumbling, leaping, trying to flounder through the snow drifts, looking for anything to eat. The fawn, that little deer, was thin-ribbed and desperate. And 
little spruce felt this calling and little spruce lowered a branch just enough that the deer could reach the branch and nibble the green needles, maybe the bark, and survive the winter. And suddenly, little spruce and all of little spruce's perfection had naked patches that had been nibbled away and couldn't regrow just right. And in that winter, when it was so cold, a small squirrel was unhoused, and it had no place to go. And it was in need of shelter. And little spruce, little spruce made a little hole in little spruce's own branches so that a nest could form and that little frightened animal would have shelter through the winter. And finally, as the winds were howling and little spruce could only dream of the ring of the bells that might come later in the year, an owl tumbled through the late winter winds and was swept, swept towards little spruce who spread his branches and caught the little owl. And the owl clung to little spruce who wasn't so small, but was big enough to be safety and shelter for a deer and a squirrel and an owl. And when it came time for the queen's woodsmen to come into the woods and cut down their winter tree, little spruce with little spruce's tufts of fur and naked patches of needles and bark and crooked branches where he had bent and twisted himself to be safety and hope. Couldn't imagine how little spruce could still have the dream of becoming the Christmas tree for a queen in that great palace in Rockefeller Center. And so the woodsman came walking through the forest, looking at all of the trees that they had been marking and watching. And this time with them in her sleigh came the queen herself because she wanted to personally choose her special tree. All the bells on her sleigh were ringing as she rode into the forest. And there was little spruce and all the other spruces were saying, you'll never be the tree. Look at us. We're so dignified and proud. We are everything that she hopes to have in her court. You, you're bent, you're crooked, you're missing parts of everything. Why would she ever choose you? And indeed, the queen was looking at the different tags that had been placed on the spruce as Al guided them into the woods and showed them each of the trees that they'd been nurturing and watching for so many years. And she paused. She paused and she looked at little spruce and she saw the tufts of hair. And she, why? Why is this tree marked? And then she looked closer, and the bells on her wrists rang as she reached into his leaves and touched the tender, bare places on little spruce. And she began to read the story of little spruce, though he could not speak for himself. His body told a story of love. It told a story of giving and sacrifice. Little Spruce's dream to be at the center of the queen's court had been given up so that he might be food and shelter and hope for the other creatures in the woods. And as she looked at Little Spruce again, she turned to the woodsman and the bells on her wrists rang as she said this, this is my Christmas tree. Bring this tree to the center of my court in Rockefeller Center. And indeed, 
all of the other spruce for, what? How can this be? How can it be that she's chosen this tree? And so indeed, they brought little spruce with them from Oneonta and upstate New York. And Al waved goodbye. And the people that were lining the streets to see the queen's tree were shocked. They were appalled. This, this is the tree the queen has chosen? Where's our beautiful, great spruce, the one that we were promised? How can this be our Christmas tree? And as the workers in the courtyard prepared the tree for the lights and the festivities, and they began to trim the branches, they found the owl, little Rocky, the solid owl, still nesting in the branches of a tree. Even then, little spruce was home to life that needed hope and connection. And the workers tenderly, tenderly removed Rocky the solid owl from the tree that was now in the center of the Queen's Court in Rockefeller Center. And they gave Rocky to caretakers that would help Rocky regain strength and take flight and migrate south to the place where Rocky belonged. And meanwhile, the queen turned to her court. And as they were beginning to put lights around the tree, she said, did you see? Did you see what we found at the heart of the tree? We found life itself. Look at the story that this tree tells you. How when someone needed hope and food, when someone needed shelter in the darkest, deepest parts of the season, this tree gave of itself. And although this tree does not look perfect like the spruce that dreamed that they would be at the center of my court, this, this is the tree that embodies love. This tree in all of its imperfection with its holes and its nakedness and its crookedness and its hurt is more beautiful, more dignified than any perfect tree I could ever have chosen. This is the tree that I offer you. This is the love that is embodied in the Christmas story that we tell to each other. And today it lives in a tree and an owl and Al who tended the tree, and the people who saw the beauty underneath the roughness. And I show it to you, and I ask all of you to dance and to ring your bells and surround this tree with joy, because this, this is the tree that reminds us of what the sacred story of love really means for each and all of us. And so they danced and rang their bells. Merry Christmas, you can unmute. Merry Christmas, thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Reverend Gail. I feel so good after hearing that story. Yeah, that's a <laughs> variation on our daughter's uh, favorite Christmas story, but it really happened. Rock that's right. Off. <laughs> made it all the way to Rockefeller Center and was rescued there. So when I read that, I was like, wow, <laughs> we have to make that part of the Christmas story. Al's real. He's really a veteran that gave his tree to the city and was, and the people were offended by the look of the tree when it first came, because I don't think they could see how beautiful it would become. So there it is. Um, do you all have another carol you would like to sing? If we have it on our list, we'll offer it to you. Somebody speak up. Do you need me to run the list again? Yes, please. Okay. So we've sung Silent Night and we've listened to Little Drummer Boy. We have It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, so, um, Angels We Have Heard on High, 
O come, all ye faithful, a little town of Bethlehem, away in the manger, hark the herald angels sing, go tell it on the mountain, the first Noel. I think we should end with joy to the world. What do you all think? Sounds good. All right. Anybody going to pick one? Angels. Hark the, herald. Hark the herald angels sing, and then angels we've heard on high. Is that the one you were going to say? Yes. All right. <laughs> we've got hark the herald angels sing, first Noel, and angels we have heard on high. Okay, we're going to sing one verse of each of those. Okay, so Chris, we'll start with hark the herald angels sing. So um, Chris is our elf up in the balcony. Here we go. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled, joyful are ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. And then we'll go to the first Noel. Yeah, do you have that one? Oh, okay. Apparently, Angels We Have Heard on High is missing, so I'm sorry for that. We're going to go to the first Noel. The first Noel. It's Cassandra's first Noel. <laughs> That's right. As a Noel. <laughs> Don't know that's Cassandra's last name. <laughs> the first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. requests for songs before we go to joy to the world and we're gonna we're gonna sing it and then we're gonna have sue play us out with joy to the world as well but are there any other songs you all would like to have I'm trying to think of um, How about it came upon the midnight clear it came upon the midnight clear do we have that one chris i think so yep we can do that one why don't we do two verses before chris
Um, we're going to close out with Joy to the World. Can we do two verses or three verses? Whatever we've got, Chris. Is that two? And then Sue will play us out. So uh, before we start that, just unmute and do Merry Christmas for each other. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Pastor and Derek. Thank you. Derek's working on the turkey. <laughs> I'm coming over. Yeah. Italian turkey. That's right. Yummy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. Now, if, uh, if you guys mute yourselves and you can sing to joy to the world. There you go. out with joy to the world. <laughs>